Can the New York Giants rebound from week one's debacle? Ed Valentine of Big Blue View and I discuss coming up next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of the Locked on Giants podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked on Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast family, your team every day. You got P Train here, Patricia Traina, and today's Friday show is uh, featuring our good friend Ed Valentine of Big Blue View. We're going to call him Ed V. We got to give you a nickname, Ed. If I got a nickname, a P train, we're going to call you Ed V. How's that sound? I'm still getting used to this P train <laughs> thing, Patty. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I can handle that. You're 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 hard enough to handle without without some sort of <laughs> fancy nickname. <laughs> oh my goodness! But hey, listen. You know, I mean, it is what it is, and it's either All that right. or PT, and PT sounds too much like PD. So, anyway, no, we'll, no, let's not go there. Let's no, not let's do not that. Go there at all. <laughs> but any, anyway, uh, we're going to talk about the New York Giants, the state of the New York Giants, coming off of a rocky Sunday night game. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the Sunday night game because. This weekend, the Giants get a chance to redeem themselves against the Arizona Cardinals, a team that also lost its regular season opener. But, Ed, we've got to go back and we've got to talk about some of the big issues that came out of Sunday's game against Dallas. And we got to start with the offensive line. At this point, is there any answer to fix this offensive line? I I really don't know that there is, Patty. I've said it. Since the offseason, the the offensive line, the success or failure of the offensive line, whether it improves from 2022 to this season, it all comes down to Evan Neal. You've got a rookie center. The bar is not real high for John Michael Schmitz because, let's face it, John Feliciano was a, a converted guard who played hard, did a decent job, but wasn't a great center. You you have Andrew Thomas, an all pro left tackle. You know, Ben Bredesen, Josh Azudu, Mark Glowinski, those guys are what they are. They're they're adequate guards, probably, you know, at best. The line come the, the guy with upside, the guy who can change the offensive line is Evan Neal. And obviously, obviously, Sunday was ugly. You just have to hope that all of the changes that he that he made, you know, losing all of that weight, all the technique changes, all of the stance changes, you just have to hope that it's just a matter of reps and a matter of confidence and and having a little bit of success. He never had any success Sunday against Dallas. You just have to hope that he that he finds some success and finds a comfort level. Because to me, that's the answer. I mean, eventually, you can move on from Mark Lewinsky if you want to. You can try Marcus McKeithen in there, fifth round pick a year ago. You could you could try you know Josh Azudu on one side and Ben Bredesen on the other side, but uh, but I don't know the gi- the personnel the Giants have is what they have. You know, Marcus McKeithen's a guy. Didn't play at all last year. Played a handful of snaps in one preseason game. Who knows what he is? Josh Azudu hasn't been good all summer. So he doesn't inspire much confidence. And you know, Shane Lemieux hasn't played in basically two or three years now, really. So how do you how do you have confidence in that? So you, you, you don't have a whole lot of choice when it comes to personnel. Maybe blocking schemes and and that kind of stuff, but but you don't have a whole lot of choice in terms of uh, of the people that you're putting out there. No, you don't. But you have a couple guys on the practice squad, 
at what point, Ed, if you're Brian Dable, and God forbid this continues with the offensive line, they continue to struggle, at what point do you say to yourself, okay, I just can't wait for this unit to gel anymore. I've got to do something. Well, I don't think you do that yet, Patty. I just don't. I, I think that – I mean, all right, if they want to move on from Mark Lewinsky, I can see that. I've I've been saying for months now that I think Lewinsky's in his last year as a giant. If you think that Marcus McKeithen can play, if you want to see if he can play – then fine, put him in there, see what happens. It certainly, it certainly isn't going to get worse than, than what we saw Sunday night against Dallas. The flip side of that is Evan Neal is struggling enough. He's having enough issues with confidence. Do you want to change the guy next to him at this point? Do you really want to do that? It's a hard decision. It's, it's not easy. There's no easy fix. As I said, it 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 to me it still comes down to whether Evan Neal can can settle in and be a competent NFL right tackle. Do you think he can settle in and be a competent right tackle? I do, but I'm more concerned than I was even at the end of last season because I think I've come to realize that that Evan Neal is not as good an athlete maybe as I thought he was. He we he came out of, of Alabama with a reputation. We all saw the box jumps that he did on the on the video and and he's this big hulking six foot seven, three hundred and fifty pound guy with big strong guy he could jump like that. But he doesn't move well doesn't appear to have real good balance and and the issues that he has are issues that he had at Alabama and he had good coaches at Alabama and he still lunges and he still has difficulty changing direction and he still has difficulty timing his punches and he's worked at it and he's worked at it and the one thing I will say for Evan Neal you dealt with Eric Flowers, all right? And you dealt with guys like James Brewer years ago, all right? Evan Neal is not those guys. Evan Neal is a conscientious young man. Evan Neal is a stand-up guy. After the Dallas game a year ago, he sat in his locker and, and answered question after question, even though you know he, he sat there and admitted he had never played a game that bad in his, in his life. And... Sunday night, when other guys were bailing out of the locker room, not wanting to talk to the media, Evan Neal stood in the middle of the room and answered questions from waves of reporters after another bad game. He's a stand-up guy, works at it, and he's not Eric Flowers in that sense where, where he just doesn't care or he just he leaves other people to talk for him. So you root for a guy like that. I think he'll work at it. The question that you begin to have is physically, does he just have the movement skills to get it done? Yeah. I mean, so far, not good, not good. And you, you're starting to wonder, you know, will that ever develop, you know, at right, some but point. it's, but it's still not time. You can't pull the plug. This right. guy was the seventh overall pick, and we've seen enough from Matt Parrott to know that he's an up-and-down, adequate swing tackle. He can give you a good game here and there, but Matt Parrott's not your answer at right tackle either, so you, 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 don't, really have a, you don't really have a good option. Yeah, you're basically – you know, ride or die, basically. At least for this year. Yeah, at least mm -hmm. for this year. All right. Coming up next on the Loft on Giants podcast, we're going to continue our conversation with Ed Valentine, a big blue view. And we're going to, coming up on the program, we're going to talk a little bit about the Giants in Arizona. Don't go anywhere. Hey, Giant fans, if you want to secure tickets to your favorite concert shows and sporting events without the stress, you need to check out Game Time. 
the fast and easy way to buy tickets right up until the day of the event. With amazing deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you're going to have. With game time, you're not only getting the lowest prices and event cancellation, you also get clear images of where your seats are in the venue. And if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So go ahead and snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the promo code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Terms apply. And again, that code is locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Hey, Giant fans, football season is here and Locked On is kicking up our coverage with Locked On NFL Kickoff Live. Each Friday, Locked On will go live from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern on every Locked On NFL YouTube channel. Hosts Tanitra Batiste, Jarvis Davis and Kyle Krabs will break down every game of the NFL slate to get you ready for your team's matchup, your fantasy lineups, your betting angles, and more. Plus, get the in-depth local analysis from our stable of NFL hosts across the country who know these teams better than anyone else. Find Locked On NFL Kickoff Live every Friday from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern on any Locked On NFL YouTube channel. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. You got me, Patricia Trena, and you've got Ed Valentine, Big Blue View, the A-team, as some of you call us. And they still love it. They still love you on my channel. I don't know why, Patty. I don't either. I don't know why. I haven't figured but, that you know, out. Just, that, just, you know, just, just, just look at this face. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't know. That, that might be why, because maybe uh, most of the people listen to this on, you know, because, you you know, you we both have faces for, for radio, so they speak. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, Patty, I, I, I can't say that to you. I have to sit next to you in the press box. Oh, that's, <laughs> I, you that's know, I, true. I, 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 I know better. So that's true, folks. If you th- if you think Ed and I get get into the banter here on the podcast, you should see us in the press box. How do we get work done? How do we get work done, Patty? How, how do we get I, I don't know? I don't know. You <laughs> distract me. I mean, I, I've actually thought about asking not to sit next to you, but I just can't do it. I just can't. But anyway, uh, you, you go you go sit up in the third row somewhere. No, I'm you go moving. sit up in the third row. I'm not gonna, I've, I've been covering longer than you. I've deserved that front row seat. Oh. <laughs> anyway, all right, Giant fans, we're talking with Ed Valentine about the New York Giants. And Ed, you know, this weekend they play the Arizona Cardinals, a team that is coming off of a uh, of a loss to the Washington Commanders. I think on paper. And I, I'm reluctant to say this because I thought this about last week, but I think the Giants may be a little bit better matchup with the Arizona Cardinals. Where do the Giants really need to lean on in order to right this ship starting with this weekend's game? Patty, I don't really care what they lean on. To be honest with you, they better win the game because all hell's going to break loose on your site and mine if they lose the game. And I think I'm going to have to retire on Monday. Because I'm just not going to want to deal with it. <laughs> You're not going to retire. Come on. I, I'm just. Uh, I. I don't even want to deal with it if they lose. If. If I don't even want to deal with Monday if they lose this game, to an Arizona team that is that spent you know training camp basically selling off pieces as fast as they could, to an Arizona team that is obviously tanking in an effort to get the number one pick. They don't want to win games. They're holding Kyler Murray out. They're playing NFL quarterbacks who probably shouldn't be NFL quarterbacks. And I I don't want to deal with it. I mean, really what this comes down to is we saw the Dallas game on Sunday. We sat through it. It was 26 to nothing. And 20 of those points were basically gifts from the Giants. And that is the anti-2022 New York Giants formula. If they can simply get back to that formula, which was don't make those mistakes, don't turn the football over, don't give the opposition the short field, then... They're better than Arizona. They should beat. They should beat them. To me, it comes down to the Giants 
getting out of their own way. And they couldn't they couldn't do that on Sunday against Dallas. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that said, Ed, you know, and I know this is kind of hard to predict or, or, or assess, but had there not been those mistakes, do you think the Giants have the quote unquote horses to be a lot more competitive than what we saw on Sunday? I mean, because on Sunday, they just couldn't get anything going. Even when they weren't making mistakes, they just weren't able to get anything going. It was almost as though the air came out of the balloon. The confidence just went out the window. And, you know, it, it was like the rain was washing away what it, what giant pride they had. Well, I think, look at it, Patty. The Giants have now lost 12 out of 13 games to the Cowboys. You entered the game losing 11 out of 12. You entered the game thinking that you're good enough, okay? Thinking that you've got a better roster than you had a year ago, which I believe the Giants do with Darren Waller, with Bobby O'Karake, you know, with some a couple of the rookies that they drafted, Jalen Hyatt, Tay Banks. I think they have a better roster, but they know they've been they've been pounded again and again and again by the Cowboys and by the Eagles. The last thing they could afford in a game like that was a bad start. They drive down there. They drive all the way down to the eight-yard line. They get a false start, a bad snap, and a blocked kick that turns into a touchdown. Instead of 7 nothing Giants, it's 6 nothing Dallas. It's a 13-point swing. And then before you, you know, before you can blink, then it's 16 to nothing. And you know, the Giants are like a boxer that doesn't know what hit him at that point. So, I mean, the game was over. The air was out of the balloon. The, the confidence was shot at that point. And you just hope that it doesn't have a lingering, you know, long-lasting effect. All right. So on that note, Ed, if you're Brian Dable, how do you make sure that you learn from last week, but you don't let it linger and get into your head to affect you in the coming week. What NFL coaches do all the time, Patty, under duress, you simplify. You simplify. You make sure your best players get the football. You make sure you ride Saquon. You make sure that you get the ball to Darren Waller. You, you do everything you can to protect that offensive line. When you were on my show, you raised the possibility – of doing more max protect of, of helping that right side of the offensive line with an extra blocker. And I like that idea. The giants did a lot of max protect a year ago. Darren Waller can get open. These, you know, these guys, can, these guys can get open. It, it doesn't matter. You can send five wide receivers out in a pattern, but if the quarterback's running for his life, as soon as he catches the snap, what good is that? You've got to give the quarterback a chance. I believe that Daniel Jones is much better than he showed on Sunday. I think there were throws that Jones made where he was off target. There were throws that he made where he was late. I think he was flustered. I think he was just flustered and uncomfortable and expecting the rush to come and, and getting out of the pocket and, he's not going to show you that he's worth that money unless he hasn't, unless, unless that offensive line gives him a chance to do that. Right. So I, I, so I just, th I just think, you know, you, you have to simplify. You, you might have to, like you said, you might have to sacrifice somebody in the pass routes and, uh, and just make sure that your playmakers touch the football. Right. And, you know, to your point about Daniel Jones, he was pressing, and we see this from him in the past, where you know things around him collapse, and he feels the need to press and try to make plays to get something going. And when he tries like that, that hard, it almost never goes right. And absolutely, he's taking a beating, an absolute beating. And it, those things, those things have an impact. That's why defensive coordinators talk about affecting the quarterback, hitting the quarterback making the quarterback look at the pass rush. 
even when you know there was a there was a throw to Jalen Hyatt across the middle where you can call it a drop, and I did call it a drop because Hyatt had two hands on it. But the ball's got to be thrown better. But if you're jumpy in the pocket, you're maybe not going to hit that pass the way that you should hit it. There was a pass on the sideline to Darren Waller that should have been a completion, but the ball was thrown late because Jones was sitting in the pocket, you know, patting the ball. And, you know, and the ball was thrown a little bit too late. And those are the kinds of things that happen when you just don't feel comfortable back there. Yeah, that definitely. And in terms of the defense, let's talk about them for a little bit. I thought they played a little bit better. I mean, a lot of the points really, you know, special teams, we can, we can blame them for some of the points, the turnovers, obviously. But what more do we need to see from this defense that we didn't see against the Cowboys? Patty, it's the same thing we didn't see enough of last year. And that's impact plays. All right. We saw Dallas get a touchdown. You know, Dallas got a touchdown on a block field goal. They also got a pick six created by Trevon Diggs. All right. Where are the game changing impact plays from the Giants defense? Who's going to make a play in that secondary? Dory Jackson, always been a nice cornerback, never been a game changing cornerback. And Sadly, that simply comes down to the fact that he doesn't catch the ball well. There's a reason he's a cornerback instead of a wide receiver. He does not catch the football very well. Can Tay Banks and Trey Hawkins maybe develop into those kinds of players? Maybe. Xavier McKinney had, I think, a five-interception season. I think that was 2021. Really good year. Where is Xavier McKinney? You know, we send out a we send out a search party for Xavier McKinney. You know, mm-hmm. when's the last time he made a real impact play? Where's the pass rush? You know, where's where's the pass rush? You've got it. You you can't get a strip sack without a pass rush. Mm-hmm. You can't get off the field on third down without a pass rush. You know, Kayvon Thibodeau and Aziz Ojolari. Look. Kayvon Thibodeau is not Micah Parsons, all right? He's not Micah Parsons, but he's not a scrub either. Kayvon Thibodeau's got to show up. He can't have a zero next to his name in the quarterback hit, quarterback pressure column. Neither can Aziz Ojolari. Those guys have to show up. Did Leonard Williams even play Sunday night? <laughs> you know, I saw Dexter Lawrence do stuff, you know, did – did, did Leonard Williams, did he take the night off? You know, did he have a veteran rest day against the Cowboys? I don't know. But, you know, these guys, these guys have to show up. These are the playmakers. This was the problem that the Giants defense had a year ago. Their, you know, their formula a year ago was to not make mistakes. They didn't have explosive plays on offense or game-changing plays on defense. And, and you need those. And for me, it's just somebody, somebody on that defense, and it's mostly the guys that I that I named already. Those are your game, those are your guys that have to be game changers. And 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 if they don't get plays from those guys, you got to get easy points. You got to change field position. You know, you, you got to be able to do those things, and you can't do them without impact plays. Exactly. Exactly. All right, coming up next, Giant fans, we're going to talk about a pet peeve of mine. Don't go anywhere. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life can sometimes drag us down, leaving us with more questions than answers. Life-changing decisions and events can challenge our coping skills and call our confidence in making decisions into question. BetterHelp can provide you with the guidance you need to become empowered in your decision-making process. BetterHelp is entirely online and is designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And if your assigned therapist turns out not to be a match, you can switch anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. 
Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on. Hey, Giant fans, if you're looking for a fun and different way to play fantasy football this season, you need to check out Prize Picks. Just pick two or more players, predict their stats, and sit back and see how they perform. It takes less than 60 seconds to make an entry, and best of all, you can turn a few bucks into some nice cash with the right projections. Prize Picks is the number one daily fantasy sports app known for its quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and wide selection of players and stat types. And they offer weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday, when each Tuesday Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. So what are you waiting for? Go to prizepicks.com slash LockedOnNFL and use the promo code LockedOnNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. And that promo code is locked on NFL for your first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. I'm Patricia Trena with Ed Valentine, a big blue view. Ed, I've got to talk about a pet peeve of mine. I'm very scared right now, Patty. I'm very scared because I'm thinking you're going to yell at me again. <laughs> I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to yell at you. I'm calm. I'm calm. Can't All you right. tell? I'm, it's I'm late thinking, at night as I'm, we record this. I'm, I'm calm. I'm chill. I, I but, hear enough. I hear enough from my wife about what I do wrong, <laughs> Patty. I don't. It's know. not about you, Ed. Oh, thank God. It's, but it is about <laughs> special teams. All right. I spoke about this on your show. I'm going to talk about this on my show. Special teams, it just seems like every week, starting with the preseason, right through the first week of the season, something has gone astray, and it's been a major part of the outcome of the game, whether it be Gillen kick, out kicking the coverage, the blocked field goal that was returned for a touchdown, guys not maintaining their lane integrity, now, T-Mac, Thomas he always says, well, you know, it's like gumbo. I work with what I've got, the ingredients I have. Well, hi, T-Mac. I just looked up some recipes for gumbo. There are some consistent ingredients in gumbo, water, flour, <laughs> butter, you know, vegetables, you know, some other stuff. So my question to you is the consistency in this special teams unit has just not been there. How do they fix it? And I understand that, you know, one week he might not have this player or that player, but you have your core guys. So what needs to change here? Is it execution? Is it coaching? Is it a combination? What can they do to fix this unit? Because it's starting to get to the point where it's affecting games a little bit more than it should be and not in a good way. I don't know exactly what they need to do, Patty, but they need to do something because you're about to burst a blood vessel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm calm. Mm. I'm telling you, I'm chill. I'm chill, Ed. But, you know, it, Patty, it bothers me as much as it bothers you. And the fact of the matter is, when's the last time the Giants had good special teams? I don't remember. I don't remember. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. And... The, the personnel changes. The thing that doesn't change, and as much, like you said, I think to remat, T Mac is terrific. All right. I love talking to T Mac, but, but the constant there is the coaching. And, you, you know, you watch how long can you put up with Jamie Gillen out kicking the coverage by 15 yards? I mean, you look at what happened the other night, and and I don't know if it was on Josh Azudu or Ben Bredesen, but but somebody's got to understand whose guy that is to block. All right, somebody has to know whose guy that is. I mean, there's 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 just as many guys on on, on offense as there are on defense. There's a guy standing in front of you. You have to know, you have to know which guy you're supposed to hit. You know, and and Shoot, I think it was last year we saw, you know, we we see special teams snafus all the time. You know, guys not understanding which guy they're supposed to block. 
picking the wrong guy to block. Like you said, not being in the right lane. When's the last time the Giants had a well-blocked kickoff? Kickoff return. You know, I don't remember when the last time is that that I don't care who the kickoff returner is, you're not going anywhere if you can't if if you don't get any blocks. Mm -hmm. But I it it boggles the mind that you know, I looked at it and and like the other night I was like that blocked field goal I'm like, "Okay, why are Ben Bredesen and Josh Azudu over there? You know, why are those two guys over there? You know, those two guys spent the entirety of training camp mostly playing the left side of the offensive line. What are those two guys doing over there? <laughs> you know, on the right side. On the right side. What are they doing over there on the right side? You know, who decided to put them over there? And, you know, I don't know. I don't know, Patty, but the the constant is the coaching, and I hate to say it, but, but you know, that uh, execution, constant mistakes, guys not knowing their assignments. You know, there was a there was a punt return this year in, in a preseason. The one the 94 yard punt return, the Giants had 10 players on the field. In addition to the fact that, that Jamie Gillen kicked the ball, you know, basically to Mars when he only needed to kick it around the corner, you know, but and, and T Max said, Oh, rookies. Oh, basically, you know, rookies. It's like, yeah, but you're the coach of those rookies. You're the one who's supposed to tell them they belong on the field. <laughs> you know, so you're the one who's supposed to make sure that they know their assignments. So it, it bothers me because it just doesn't stop. Yeah, and you know, look, I don't want to pick on a on a particular coach because I know to an extent some of their hands are tied, but. When this goes on and on and on, and you no, have to stop and, and and say, look, what are we doing here? Patty, there are years when special teams are going to be bad for the simple reason that your football team is bad. Right. Okay. Or you have, you know, I remember talking to Steve Weatherford when Weatherford was, was still punting for the Giants. And it was toward the end of a season – and the last couple games, the Giants had given up, you know, a couple of long returns. And he said, oh, look at what we're covering these kicks with. We're covering these kicks with, you know, half of these guys we just signed off the street. You know, half of these guys we just signed off the street a few days ago. Of course, we're not going to be able to cover these kicks because these guys, you know, half of these guys maybe, you know, weren't in the league three days ago. <laughs> you know, so, but that's not the situation with the Giants. This is the beginning of the year. This is the team you chose to have. And, and it's just, it it's mystifying. It's one thing not to be able to find, you know, a big time return guy. It's a complete different thing to week after week after week have situations where guys don't know their assignments. Yeah, and that's just inexcusable. Mm -hmm. It just is, and 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 we both sound sad about it because we both like T Mac. Yeah, but but when you the the constant on special teams is the coordinator and the mistakes. Those are the two constants. Yeah, I mean, hopefully they turn it around because look, you cannot have special teams sway the outcome of your game in a negative way. Ideally you wanted no. to sway it in a positive way. And no. I can't think of the last time really, you know, you could say and, that. And Graham Gano is a tremendous kicker. Graham mm -hmm. Gano is, he deserves every penny that the giants pay him. He's a tremendous kicker. And you, you don't pin that block field goal on him, you know, but, but you sure would like to take advantage of having a guy like that. Absolutely. All right, Ed. Well, on that down note, <laughs> we'll call it a show uh, and hope for something better this weekend when the Giants visit the Arizona Cardinals, get back on track, play a lot better than they did against Dallas. Because, look, if they go 0-2 and they, get, they, they lose to the Cardinals by a big amount, 
rest in peace to my mentions on Twitter and threads and Instagram and, and, and to yours as well. Don't, on don't, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going there, Patty. I'm just not going there. If, if, if that happens, I'm not going into my mentions on that, that platform formerly known as Twitter. It, we, you and I got in enough trouble earlier this week as it was on, on the, platform formerly known as twitter we got in enough trouble arguing with people about the turf at metlife stadium so i'm i'm not going there so i'm just not, i'm just not dealing with people if the giants are zero and two yeah no i i totally i totally agree with you i mean wow i don't even want to think <laughs> about it but uh we'll see what the weekend brings ed as always appreciate you coming on and giving me the inside as well as the banter. Nobody does it like you do, my Always, friend. Always, Patty. Oh, oh <laughs> I, I, I try. I save up. I save up all my good, all my good jokes and and all my snarky remarks. I save them up for you, Patty. Oh, and I do the same <laughs> for you as well. So, all, all right, right, giant fans. On that note, we're going to call it a show. Again, thank you all for making us your first listen of the day, or if you watch on YouTube, your first watch of the day. Giant fans, we will be back on Monday. David Turner and I will break down the Giants-Cardinals game. And, of course, on, on uh, YouTube, if there's any late-breaking news with injuries or whatnot, I'll have those for you in the form of shorts. So hope you will check that out. Be sure to check out Big Blue View, Ed's work, Giants Country, my work, and, of course, here at the Locked on Giants podcast. So, Giant fans, have a great weekend, and we will see you on Monday.